Um, first of all, I just want to say that I'm immensely pleased to be here uh, to launch uh, together with the investment division of UNCTAD uh, the new investment policy framework for sustainable development. Um, and in the name of IISD, I would like to thank UNCTAD for hosting the event here today. Um, UNCTAD is currently the only multilateral uh, inter intergovernmental organization with global membership uh, with a mandate to work on investment. So the integration of investment uh, with uh, sustainable development in a policy framework um, developed by UNCTAD is extremely significant for the global community. And I think it's an, a, an extremely important step taken. It's an important step for developed and developing countries. Uh, it's important for the private sector, for state enterprises, for the people, and of course, the natural environment. Um, building on the work done by NGOs, <laughs> and not always agreeing in the past, um, and more recently also with academia, more and more, uh, the new investment policy framework developed by UNCTAD with input from a wide variety of stakeholders takes the investment for sustainable development paradigm to a completely new, different level, higher level. Um, UNCTAD entitles its preface, as we saw, uh, towards a new generation of investment policies. And of course, this is exactly what we need. We need to move away from the outdated policies and models to new ones. And um, as we have said in the past, sustainable development really is an, invest in a, an investment issue. We believe that investment, um, domestic, regional, global, is indispensable to address the social and environmental challenges that we are facing. But at the same time, investment is not automatically good. It can put great stress on the natural environment. One think, for example, uh, uh, of the mining sector. It can create, create great uh, social tensions, lead to violations of human rights, and we saw this uh, with the work of John Ruggie. Um, and it can exacerbate inequalities. So in the long run, or even the short, uh, some investment is simply more bad than good. So what UNCTAD is proposing today is a new generation of investment policies that, and I quote, um, operationalize sustainable development in concrete measures and mechanisms at the national and international level and at the level of policy making and implementation. So we heard from Jörg earlier which of the elements the uh, investment policy framework for sustainable development, IPFSD, <laughs> Uh, incorporates. But just briefly, we heard there are three main parts, uh, the list of core uh, principles for investment policy making for sustainable development. And uh, I might mention here that this should be uh, differentiated from the core principles or investment principles that are sometimes used, for example, by the OECD, uh, which refer uh, solely uh, to investment protection. So this is a very different set of core <laughs> principles. The second issue can this consist, as we heard, of the national policy guidelines and the third of policy options for international investment agreements. So the uh, policy framework takes a very integrated approach and while the principles remain general, the propositions and options discussed for national and international policy making are quite specific. Um, this, this overall comprehensive framework will, I believe without a doubt, serve policymakers in designing their own policies. Both UNCTAD and IISD work extensively with developing countries and this framework can serve as a, an important element for this work. Developing countries want to attract quality investment the kind that adds economic value, the kind that creates jobs, that brings new technology, that improves living conditions and has minimal impact on the natural environment. The investment policy framework offers some guidance how this could be achieved. Governments therefore gain a tool to assist them, including in the measurement of success. But how free are governments to take this, th that leap to set up an investment framework 
for sustainable development. Unfortunately, not as free as we might wish or think. Why? Because some of the constraints imposed by the current legal framework uh, makes it difficult for countries to make that transition. Countries can change their laws to implement and apply the core principles that we looked at earlier, but they cannot amend investment treaties or contracts just like that. Even if a country finds that these do not live up to or reflect the core principles and values set out in UNCTAD's new and modern investment policy framework. So what if a treaty is unreservedly unbalanced? And we saw that balance is one of the core principles. What if a contract completely extinguishes the right to regulate through stabilization or freezing clauses? And we saw the right to regulate as one of the principles. What if the treaty or the contract largely ignores corporate governance and responsibility? What if, what if? The fact is, these gaps are not easy to fix, and changes can become very, very expensive, if not impossible, because of the lock-in effects of treaties and contracts, and the combination of both. And so, we also have the sticks that the investors have today, under the old models, that uh, make this change more difficult. And that is where international cooperation, also one of the 11 core principles, uh, comes in and will be needed most to fix past mistakes. The IPF um, provides a menu of better options and together we will have to find the way to transition into an investment paradigm for sustainable development. So congratulations on that. I look forward to the discussion. I just have a few more detailed comments, if I still have some time. Um, again, uh, we, we saw that we have the three sections in or parts, the 11 core principles, uh, a section on national policy guidelines, and then a policy, uh, as, uh, the policy options for treaties. And clearly, the first section, the list of core principles, is meant to inform the others both. Um, the investment uh, policy framework sets out uh, the, the, for, the overarching princi principle that we saw, which is to promote investment for inclusive growth and sustainable development. It then groups the other principles into two categories. One is the general process of policy development and policy making, so more procedural, and the other is uh, or relates to the specifics of investment policy making. Um, and then we have the last one on cooperation. So to come back to the principles relating to the specifics of policy making. So what do we have here? We have balanced rights and obligations. We have the right to regulate. We have openness to investment. We have investment protection and treatment. We have investment promotion and facilitation, corporate governance, and responsibility. In terms of the current frameworks, it is safe to say, I think, that some of these pr principles are much more prominent than others. At the national levels, investment laws and frameworks would generally tend to focus on investment protection and promotion, though, of course, these laws will be balanced by the overall legal framework in the country, uh, such as environmental and labor law. So at the national level, uh, the situation is quite complex and the differences amongst the countries will be significant. At the international level, the focus has been so far primarily on investment protection and market access or openness to inv of investment. The other core principles that we just heard about are pretty much absent from the international investment framework, the treaties, I mean. Not integrated in the majority of the current older treaties are principles regarding balanced rights and obligations, the right to regulate, corporate governance and responsibility, and even investment promotion is not very well developed in the treaties. And in order to properly address these gaps, investment treaties need to better integrate all of the core principles that we looked at here. 
and ensure policy coherence with the other areas of national and international law. And this is currently not the case. The UNCTAD document, again, provides some guidance as to how this might be done by providing policy options. Page 47 provides an overview of the coverage. So we saw this very dense list uh, that was uh, the slide that was put up here. And the starting point is post-established investment treaty model, the post-establishment um, uh, investment treaty mo model covering uh, the standard of investor protection and dispute settlement mechanisms, the way we know, the, the more traditional uh, approach. But then the, the policy framework goes further and provide, provides options relating to investor obligations, to investment, to promotion, and the prohibition to lower and relax environmental and social standards. The framework also provides options on pre-establishment models, which is uh, treated separately. And then, of course, we saw from Jörg the interesting addition uh, is the section on uh, special and differential treatment, which is not currently uh, utilized much in this area, um, in the investment area. So this more comprehensive approach covered by the UNCTAD uh, document is not out of sync um, out ahead of its time. So we might think, okay, we only have these old treaties. This is, comes out of the blue. Uh, it doesn't make sense to, to just come up and pull out of a hat all these other aspects. But the fact is that there are many developments ongoing. So some of the newer treaties already incorporate some of uh, the elements, the additional newer elements. And also, there are developments, for example, in the Southern African Development Community where uh, a new template is being um, looked at and developed to apply to, uh, nego for negotiations with outside states, which has and incorporates all of these elements. Um, we also have the Commonwealth Secretariat, even present here, uh, which has a, a process uh, really leading to a, 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 an investment guide uh, and which complements very well the work that has been done by, by UNCTAD because uh, by contrast to, to here, uh, the Commonwealth Guide actually also provides some, uh, some drafting language. So uh, we do have uh, examples of uh, these developments but they are not uh, yet dominant. Um, so, just to finish, the approach taken in the investment policy framework um, is then to list the issues and provide clear or provide options. And clearly, some of the options you saw that you have these different options. Some of them, the very post-colonial kind of uh, model language, and then other options that are more, if I may say, progressive, um, and that have been developed in 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 part in Northern and, and Latin America, uh, but also in Eastern and Southern Africa and Asia. Um, and so this work is to be applauded. At the same time, the format, in my view, could pose some hurdles and challenges for developing countries in identifying those models that would suit them best, because it, at least uh, from a visual perspective, all of the, 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 uh, the, the options are giving the same, uh, are given the same weight and I do think that some of them, um, and, and that is acknowledged, are maybe not as conducive to sustainable de development compared to others. So while the uh, investment policy framework will undoubtedly be very useful for su future negotiations, ways will have to be explored how to best fix the, what UNCTAD language, spaghetti bowl of, three th of the 3,000 treaties we already have of which most, uh, the most, only the more recent ones reflect some of the core principles that are additional to the more traditional ones. Thank you.